Suppose you are a chef and you want to decide every day what you cook based on what you cooked yesterday and how today's weather is. You decide to take help of a neural network for everyday planning. Let's rewind and first see our precious neural networks. Here is a simple neural network with input layer having 9 inputs, a hidden layer and an output layer. Notice a couple of things in this neural network. Here, we define the number of inputs beforehand and this remains constant. Also, all inputs are fed to the network at the same time in the beginning. How can we use this kind of architecture to decide the food to cook based on yesterday's meal? For that, we need a memory of previous output which is not present in a neural network. Also, we cannot provide input of today's weather for each day as inputs are passed beforehand. This is a simple problem where our recurring neural networks can come to rescue. An RNN has a memory which takes decision based on previous outputs and the current input. Here, in this diagram, at each time step, an input is given and an output is produced and the same output is given to the same network for the next time step. And thus, using previous output and current input, an output is produced and this process goes on. The network at all steps is same. That means the same activation function, bias and weights are used and inputs are given one after another in sequential manner. So for our shift example, say the first day the weather is hot, so you make ice cream sundae. Then the next day the weather is hot only. But the previous output is ice cream sundae, so we cook a different dish, say salad. The RNN learns from this sequence of events, capturing the correlation between weather conditions, past meals and the current cooking decisions. The next day, the weather is cold, so we make a tomato soup. And this goes on. This representation of RNN is called unfolded RNN as we have all the time steps shown. This can be represented in this folded form because at each time step, an input is given, output is produced and the output is given to the next step. This is how a simple neural network looks like where input is multiplied with weight, a bias is added and the value is given to activation function which then produces an output. Now in RNN, this output is then given as input to the next time step. Thus, it unfolds into this. Notice that the weights and biases remain same and the previous output is multiplied by a weight. This then unfolds further to the time step we need. The architecture of RNN can vary according to the need. First, there is many-to-many -many or sequence-to-sequence -sequence RNN where an input is given and output is produced at each time step. This can be used for forecasting like predicting stock prices. Next, there is many-to-one or sequence-to-vector. In this, inputs are given at each time step but only one output is considered and other outputs are ignored. This type of RNN can be used in sentiment analysis for tagging whether a sentence is positive or not. Third, there is one-to-many or vector-to-sequence. Here, only a single input is given in the beginning and all time steps only use previous output as input. This is useful in image captioning where an image is given as input and a caption is generated for it. Fourth, we have encoder-decoder. In this type of architecture, at first we only provide inputs for some time steps and then we only get outputs. These are good for translations as we need the whole sentence before translation can be done. As meaning of sentences can change based on their position. 
So we choose the type of architecture according to the problem in hand. Let's rewind and see how neural networks were trained. Finding best weights and biases for a network involves comparing the network's output to actual targets using a loss function. Loss is calculated and then the network computes gradients of the loss function with respect to its weights and biases. By computing the gradient, we can determine the direction in which to adjust the parameters to minimize the loss function, thus improving the performance of the model. Similar to feed-forward networks, RNNs calculate loss by comparing predicted outputs with actual targets using a loss function. This, com this comparison is made at each time step. Gradients of the loss function with respect to RNN parameters, weights and biases, are computed using backpropagation through time. This process accounts for sequential dependencies, allowing learning from past outputs. As an RNN unfolds, it becomes difficult to train due to vanishing or exploding gradients. Now let's see vanishing gradient problem. Say, for the first time step, we have input 1 as input. This input will produce an output which will then be multiplied by W2 and given, and given to the next time step. Here, the value of W2 is say 0.1. So, as the RNN unfolds, input 1 gets multiplied by 0.1 as many times. Now, for 100 time steps, input 1 will be multiplied by 0.1 raised to power 100, which would be a very small value. This value will then be a part of gradient calculation and the parameter updates during training will be small too, leading to slower convergence and making it more challenging to find optimal weights. This problem is called vanishing gradient, which occurred here because value of W2 was less than 1. Exploding gradient is opposite of vanishing gradient, where value of W2 greater than 1 causes the weight updation to have high values and thus finding optimal value becomes challenging. Here, the value of W2 is say 2. So, as the RNN unfolds, input 1 keeps getting multiplied by 2. For 100 time steps, input 1 will be multiplied by 2 raised to power 100 which is a very huge number, leading to exploding gradient. The vanishing and exploding gradient problems in RNNs can be mitigated using various techniques. Limiting the magnitude of gradients during training prevents them from becoming too large or too small. This helps stabilize the training process and prevents exploding gradients. This is called gradient clipping. Architectures such as long short term memory and gated recurrent units are mechanisms such as gates and memory cells that allow them to better capture long term dependencies in data. Normalizing the activations of each layer can help stabilize training and prevent the vanishing gradient problem. Batch normalization normalizes the inputs to each layer, making optimization more stable. In this video, we saw the need, architecture, training process, and shortcomings of recurrent neural network. See you in the next video. Thank you.